Uh, alrighty guys, let me get myself situated here because we have a lot to break down in this video. We have 10 stocks to go over like you guys saw in the title, all of which are listed right here. And we're on top of that going to go over what to look out for this week when it comes to big economic events, what's going on. And I just want to break down the overall markets, kind of what I'm looking to do in these markets. So if you guys find value, all I ask is to hit that like button, man. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe as well. I really appreciate you guys as always. And with that being said, let's just dive into the video. So yeah, markets overall have been doing pretty well these past couple of weeks. If I pull up the 10 day on SPY, which is the S&P 500, you guys are going to see a couple days ago, not even, I mean, about 12 days ago, not even two weeks ago, SPY was at 377 and it closed just under $400 in this past week. In other words, it went up five and a half percent in just about 12 calendar days. That's pretty remarkable, guys. And pulling up the four hour chart here, you guys can see we are right by a big level of resistance heading into this week, being about 400 to about 405. If that level can break on SPY, this thing could rip. I mean, we've talked about this, right? 410, maybe 415, even higher than that is where it could be going. And that's kind of what I'm wa uh, watching out for, potentially to happen here, whether it's this week, the next couple of weeks, that's on my radar, 100%, especially if we break over 400 and 405. And Triple Q, if I pull that up, we can see it's approaching 285. Very big level here for Triple Q, which tracks the NASDAQ 100, guys. Uh, you can see here, 285, that's been resistance for you know, a good amount of time, especially back in September, October, a little bit in November, right? Then we broke back over up 285, ran to about 300. So if we break out of 285 on this particular ETF, guys, which again tracks the NASDAQ 100, you probably know that, we could be running 295, 300, maybe even higher on, um, on this ETF. So this week, guys, you know, to build off of that, which maybe could send the markets higher, I don't know, maybe not. But this week on Wednesday at 8.30 a.m., we get the PPI numbers and the retail sales numbers, which I think the retail sales number um, is looking to be negative. Last I checked, we'll, 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 re, um, we'll, we'll come back to that on Wednesday, guys, so make sure to subscribe. And on Friday at 10 a.m., we get the existing home sales, which essentially shows the annualized number of residential buildings that were sold during the previous month, excluding new construction. And the forecast is looking to be about 3.95 million homes, where last month it was just over uh, 4 million, 4.09 million to be exact. So less than what it was um, last month. And again, keep your eyes on that forecast, the number 3.95 million. So those are some big things going on this week, guys. Again, on Wednesday and on Friday, we get those those key numbers and we've been getting a bunch of um, you know data here the CPI which really launched the markets so let's see what the PPI is looking uh, looking to come in at and if we look at the metals guys heading into this week if we pull gold up we can see this is you know heading into the week on a very you know on a very nice uh, it's had a very nice stretch in other words you can see here gold back a couple weeks ago i mean more like two months ago it was at 16 18 an ounce now it's just, now it just broke over 1900 an ounce and i've been saying on the channel guys right if gold were to break 18 1850 it could really start turning um you know in, in the bull's favor and that's been what's been going on you guys can see on the three-year chart we're now starting to break out of this downwards channel which is great we're taking out again 1850 1900 these are big levels and on silver this is also starting to break it's not fully out of that 25 dollars resistance which i need to see a break out of but it's uh it's getting pretty close you know it's it's almost there my alert is set at 25 dollars an ounce right now on silver so let's dive into these stocks guys let me pull up my uh my phone here because we have a lot of companies reporting earnings not just this week but later next week too, or in the week after heading into the, um, you know, the, the later days of January. So before we even do that, if you guys haven't gotten your free stocks yet for Moomoo, might as well plug it in right now. You could get up to 15 stocks 
each up to 2000 bucks by using my link down below. And you could also get some free stocks from Webull, 12 stocks, fractional shares with any amount deposited, also linked right down below. So if you guys want some free money and you also want to support the channel, of course, it's always appreciated. Use those links down below. I appreciate you guys as always. So let's pull up Tesla, which is TSLA. You guys, have you guys heard of this company called Tesla? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if you've heard of it. Let me know in the comments, guys. But Tesla is reporting earnings, not this week coming up, this short week, but the week after. So let's just start talking about this. We have earnings coming up on the 25th of January, which is on Wednesday. So EPS for Tesla is looking to come in at $1.19, so profitable, another profitable quarter, on revenue of $24.89 billion, which would be up 40% roughly year over year. And that's pretty good. I mean, very good. Tesla, even though it's been in the news, obviously, for, um, you know, for, for, it's when, when is it not in the news at this point, right? Uh, for, uh, it's been in the news for a lot of bad reasons recently, but, you know, it's it's still growing. The reality is Tesla is still growing. And now that they're cutting prices, a lot of people are looking at it from the lens like, oh my God, demand's dying. They have to cut prices. But other people are looking at it from the lens like, okay, if Tesla really wants to dominate the EV market, which it is now, but if it really wants to hold or, you know, keep its foot on the neck of the EV market, they're going to have to, or the strategy is they're looking at it like, okay, maybe we cut prices and then more people can buy the cars. They're more affordable. More people can buy the cars. And that's another lens that people are looking at it through. So it's not, it's, it's not necessarily because nobody wants the cars that they're cutting the prices. It's because that they just want to get, you know, the cars in the hands of more people. And that's why I've been saying on the channel, guys, and, and you know this, once they actually introduce that cheaper model, $25,000, $30,000, whatever it ends up being, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be, I don't want to say game over for the electric vehicle market because nobody knows what's going to happen. Things are ever changing, uh, but it's, it's going to be, it's, it, they're going to be dominating the market for a while. Let's just put it that way. At least in my opinion, you know, if they really can nail the cheaper model, which it's not going to come out anytime soon. Uh, but you know, the fact that they're cutting prices now is getting the cars in, in hands of people that, you know, re previously couldn't get them. I mean, Model wise, the price was cut by like 15%, I think, in the US. You know, I think it's like $43,000 now or something like that uh, for the base. And that's pretty, pretty good. I mean, considering what it was and considering what other models of Teslas are wor uh, worth. You know, the Model X, I think, is still like 110000 bucks. The Model S Plaid, forget about it. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys think about that? I mean, this is going to be very interesting to see how these numbers end up looking and how the stock reacts right now it's at 122 dollars a share and it's right under a multi-week resistance right under about 125 six ish which you can see that's where we failed since before christmas so if tesla is able to get out of that point 125 six i'll set my alert there right now i just deleted one i just had in the 124s let me make one at 125 mark is that we're above if we can break out of that point guys who knows? This could rally into earnings. And a lot of people in my comments, and, and what do you think? Let me know. A lot of people are speculating that Tesla is going to rally into earnings. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. The alert is set in place, 125. Let's see how it ends up playing out. We also have Boeing this month at the end of the month. I think it's on the same day as Tesla. Yeah, same day as Tesla on the 25th on Wednesday before the market opens, Boeing is uh, reporting. And wait, is Tesla? Tesla's after the market, right? But let me double check that to make sure. Um, yeah, after the bell on Wednesday is Tesla, before is Boeing. So Boeing, if you guys haven't noticed, has been in an insane performer. The stock has crushed it. And if we pull up the three-year chart, we're now approaching a multi-year resistance, which is right around, well, it's really just about a one-year resistance. Eh, I guess you could say multi-year. Anyway, it's right around 220 to about 225. E even 230, you can say, is a sticking point. This, I think, is going to be a point where Boeing, I mean, if they drop the ball on earnings, maybe it could be um, setting itself up for a sell-off. It makes sense to me. You know, if it ra rallied at 230, maybe earnings weren't that great, it sold off to about, let's say, 190 again or 200. But if earnings crush it, and this is able to get past 235, let's say, Boeing could really be 
starting to push to the next level. I mean, which is in this case, you guys can see the highs from back in August of 2021 were 240 bucks. Back in May of 2021, almost two years ago, 260. Back in March of 2021, almost two years ago, about 275, 280. So Bowen could really start tearing it up at that point, but I'm not too convinced yet. We have to see how earnings are, and they're looking to do EPS of 29 cents on revenue of 20 billion, which would be up 35% year over year. And mind you, these are all projections. Keep that in mind, guys. These uh, uh, <laughs> keep that in mind, guys. If I can even talk today, these are all projections. Um, so we don't know what they're going to do, but that's what the numbers are projected by the analysts from the analysts. Um, so let's see, guys. Earnings are next week or on, on the 25th, 10 days after me filming this video. And the stock's already performed very, very nicely. And, you know, if this is one that I was in as a trade, which I'm not, full disclosure, but if I was, I would be, and this is not financial advice, but I would be trimming at this point. No no doubt about it. If I was in it as a trade, I'd probably probably even be selling out, depending on where I bought him. Uh, but, yeah, Boeing, you got to watch out for it. Freeport, Macron is another one. FCX is the ticker, which is also been crushing it. They're looking to do, let's see here, these numbers, 43 cents EPS on revenue of 5.35 billion, which would be down 13% year over year. So they're actually looking to decrease revenues, decline or have declining revenues year over year. And they're reporting on the same day as Boeing and Tesla on Wednesday, the 25th of January. So let me pull up this three year on Freeport. Let's see what's going on. Oh, I'm not liking that. Uh, this looks like a head and shoulders guys. Does it not? I mean, clear as day to me. We have the left shoulder right there. We have the head right there. You guys see that. And then we have the right shoulder right there. Boom. So if this fails at the neckline, which right now it's no joke right at the neckline, it's testing it as I'm making this video, you know, it's, it's right at 45, 46. If we fail at this point, Asta la vista free poor macamron, because at that point, guys, it's probably going to dump down towards, um, you know, that 180 moving average again on the, on the three-year chart, anywhere towards 30, maybe even under that. Who knows? Maybe it just goes to 40 for all we know. Uh, but yeah, this this point needs to break. I'm going to set my alert at 46.50, and we'll see what it does moving forward here at the neckline. And of course, if you guys have any stocks you want me to cover, if you have any thoughts on the stocks that I am covering, drop me a comment down below. And if you haven't done so already, I don't like to ask too much about this, but hit that like button. Let's try and get at least 100 likes on this video. I challenge you guys, can we get at least 100 likes on the video? Hit the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. So yeah, Freeport Macmoran, keep your eyes out on it. What else? We have Airlines, which I think we had, did we have DAL last week? Uh, yeah, we had DAL last week, which if you guys look here, this thing broke out. I mean, holy crap, it broke all the way to 40 reported earnings and it pulled down. Uh, now it's consolidating at about 35, 36, which I think I did talk about, uh, or actually maybe not, maybe not. That might've been on Patreon. Either way, um, I forget exactly where I talked about that, but I think I talked about that either way. Um, AAL, if I pull that up, they're reporting this week and this stock has gone ballistic heading into earnings from 1250 to now $17. It is up 37% guys in a couple days, which is crazy. And their earnings are on the 26th. So not this week, next week. That is on Thursday, guys, the day after Freeport, Boeing, and Tesla. We have American Airlines looking to do about $0.75 cents in EPS on revenue of $12.88 billion, up 36.6% year over year. And I would not be surprised if this stock did something that or did something similar to that of which DAL did, which DAL ripped and then it reported earnings. It was way too over, over pumped, in my opinion, heading into earnings. It ran 25%. Earnings came out. Boom. It pulled back. I would not be surprised if that same exact thing happened here on AAL. And to be honest on LUV as well, which is the, maybe not as badly as LUV because, because it's not up as much heading into the uh, earnings, but it is up 14% with earnings coming up here on the same day as AAL, which is the 26th not this Thursday coming up, but the Thursday afterwards. So LUV is looking to do a good old penny, one cent in EPS uh, versus, well, not versus, but on revenue of $6.19 billion, which would be up 22.6% year over year. Not too bad. Not as great as AL, but pretty decent, guys. Up almost 25% 
year over year. So yeah, I mean, LUV doesn't look as overbought as LU, uh, not LUV, as AAL, but both of them are more on the overbought side. And AAL, I, I would definitely not gamble on that, me personally, uh, unless it pulls back heading into earnings, which could happen. I mean, earnings are not this week, they're next week. So we could see a little bit of a pullback heading into that next, um, the, the next week, but we'll see. We haven't seen it yet. And of course, We'll come back. We'll we'll do um you know we'll do an update on these stocks throughout the week to see how they're looking like. We also have Visa reporting earnings and Mastercard not this week but next week. Visa just broke above 220, which is great. It's at a fresh high here on the four hour chart, as you guys can see. And if I show you guys this three year chart, let me pull it up, and you and you all can see it pretty clearly right now. You can see an inverse head and shoulders. Don't you guys see that? We have the left shoulder. We have the head. We got the good old right shoulder here, and now we broke over 220, which has been a resistance for almost close to, uh, you know, over a half a year. So by the looks of it here, guys, Visa could be filling the gap to 230, followed by maybe 235, based on what I'm seeing here on this chart. And EPS is looking to be $2.01 on revenue of 5.7, or rather 7.7, I read the wrong line, guys, 7.7 billion up 9.1% year over year. And these earnings are on the 26th, which is on Thursday, not this Thursday, next Thursday. So keep your eyes on Visa. It's breaking out for sure. I like the way the chart is looking personally. And MasterCard is another one, the competitor to Visa, right? The competitor uh, to Visa. They're looking to do EPS of 257 on revenue of 5.79 billion, which would be up 11% year over year. And look at that. MasterCard hit a new high on this four hour chart and the stock is up $100 a share, over $100 a share in the past couple months. I mean, this thing is on a tear up 36% over the past couple of months. You can't make it up. I mean, some of these stocks are, are getting back to their all time highs. I mean, MasterCard is pretty dang close, about 25 bucks away from all time highs. Visa is about 30 bucks away from all time highs. These stocks are really starting to move again, guys. And look, if we go back to MasterCard and zoom in a bit, you're going to see if it wants to load. Come on, MasterCard. Let's go. If it wants to load, you can see we're right at 375 now. If this breaks, we break 380. We have a wide open gap to 400 bucks a share on uh, MasterCard. So watch out for that one. We also have Intel this week, guys. Let me pull it up. Ticker symbol INTC. Not this week. I keep saying this week. I think I keep saying this week at least. I mean next week, guys. Not this week. Next week. Um, Intel's on Thursday of the on the 26th, I believe. Let me take a look here. Uh, yeah, Thursday the 26th is um, is Intel. And they're looking to do EPS of 20 cents on revenue of 14.49 billion, which would be down. Get ready for this. 25% year over year. So don't expect growth out of Intel. Actually expect the exact opposite. Decline and a heavy decline year over year. And the stock is trying to break out. I mean, we are above the moving averages on the four hour chart for the first time in a couple of months, but it's uh, it's nothing uh, it's nothing worth writing home about yet. Let's just say that because it's not above the highs from a couple months ago yet. Sure, if it breaks 32, starts breaking into the mid 30s again, all right, that's a different story, uh, but we're not there yet. And for now, I'm going to set my alert at 33 bucks. Mark is that we're above, and we'll see what it ends up doing at that point. So we have two more stocks, guys, that I want to go over, which are not reporting earnings this week, but a subscriber commented them in the comment section. And I figured, let me talk about these companies. They look pretty good, and we, we've talked about them plenty of times on the channel. So Best Buy, look at this. We have a clear-cut cup and handle Clear as day, cup and handle, heading into this week. You guys see it right here. Let me make sure you guys can see that. Yep, we have the cup and we have the handle. Oops, I just opened Final Cut Pro. We do not want Final Cut Pro open right now, guys. Um, wait a second. There we go. All right. Sorry, guys. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Best Buy. We have the cup and handle. We're testing 87 bucks this week, which is going to be a multi-month. Well, it is a multi-month resistance, and if we take that out, the stock will be at a multi-month high, which if we do break $87, guys, and we pull the year up, the yearly chart, there could be a lot more upside on this thing towards 100 maybe even above 100 bucks. And if we just look at this three-year chart, let me actually get rid of my alert. Actually, I don't even need to get rid of my alert. But if we look at this chart here, on top of that cup and handle that we just talked about, 
we also, I'm going to butcher this, but we have an inverse head and shoulders. You guys see this? Pretty clear as day to me. Inverse head and shoulders. So now all this needs to do is break 87, 88, and it could be off to the races, right? It could be off to the races. So I like BBY. I really, really do like it. And the last stock for the video, guys, last stock for the video is CPK, which if we pull this up, Chesapeake Utilities, we also have an inverse head and shoulders. Let me show you this. We have the left shoulder right here. Boom. We got the head right here. Boom. And then we have the right shoulder. And as of last week, we actually started breaking out of the moving averages and we're at a multi-week high, which is a very good sign in the short term, although it's not fully breaking up. I mean, you could argue it's still in a downtrend based on the trend line I just drew. But if it could start breaking out of the highs from this point right here, let me zoom in and show you guys. Breaking the highs from the end of October, early November, 125, six bucks. That's where it could really start to uh, to take off. So I'm going to set my alert. Mark is that we're above 126, and we'll see where it goes from there. Maybe 130s, mid 130s, high 130s. That's where it could be going. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Again, let's try and get at least 100 likes. Make sure to subscribe as well to this channel and my second channel, Stocks Talks Money. And don't forget to get up to 15 stocks from Moomoo Moo and 12 stocks from Webull. Linked right down below. It's free money, guys. It also helps out the channel. And if you want, you could also check out my Patreon. If you like the way I break down charts, you want exclusive content, more access to me throughout the day, Discord access, all that good stuff. Link down below on Patreon. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.